supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Uh, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. G'day and welcome back to McGrathmatics for another HSC maths lesson. Today we are focusing on what is probably the hardest part of trigonometry in the standard HSC course and also in the year 11 advanced maths course and that is bear rings. Uh, yeah, that's comedy. Uh, I'm going to take you through the types of bearing questions you are more likely to encounter but before we do that, uh, we just need to get an understanding of the two types of bearings in this course and how we find them before we can start tackling some questions involving trigonometry. I'll start off with a quick example which for some reason is to do with Spongebob. We have Spongebob traveling on a true bearing of 130 degrees from A to B. Let's see what that looks like. We have Spongebob right here. Now he's starting at point A because we're going from A to B. So the from tells you where to start and the to tells you where to look. Now at point A, Spongebob is going to get out his compass and point himself north. Now a true bearing is just a clockwise rotation from north. So Spongebob is going to face north and then rotate 130 degrees clockwise and now he'll be looking in the direction of B. So all he, all he has to do is travel along that bearing 130 degrees north from 130 degrees clockwise from north, travel along this line for some distance and he will get to point B. So that right there is called a true bearing. That is the most common type of bearing given in the HSC. But there's another type which is called compass bearings. So to find compass bearings, what we need to do is extend our north line to create a north-south line and say, well, north-south is a straight line, so that would be 180 degrees. So if this is 130 up here, it means the gap in here to fill it in must be 50 because 50 plus 130 equals 80. So another way of talking about this direction from A to B is you could refer to this as from south, 50 degrees towards east. Okay, so starting at the bottom and rotating 50 degrees towards the east line. So our two types are a true bearing, which is just a clockwise rotation from north, or the other kind is a compass bearing where you're starting with south or north and then saying how far you're gonna rotate east or west. As I said, true bearings are more common, but we do still need to know what compass bearings are as well. So we'll do a few examples of those. Here are three directions. We're starting from the middle point and we're going to A and then to B and then to C. We're gonna do both true and compass bearings. So if we're thinking about starting in the midpoint here, we need to know how far we are going to rotate clockwise from north to be then looking at this blue line. So starting from the center, pointing north and then rotating clockwise. That is going to take us, I might actually use a mouse to make this easier. Yeah, um, this is going to take us nine degrees to get to east, 180 to get to west, and we need to figure out what this gap is in here. So keep in mind, all of our quadrants are of course going to be 90 degrees. So if this is 33, it must be 57 in here because 90 take away 33 is 57. So to find our true bearing, we're going to do 90 plus 90 plus 57, which gets us a value of 237. That is our true bearing of O to A. Now for our compass bearing, because we know this is 57, we can start from south like before, and we can say, well, from south, if you rotate 57 degrees, you'll now be on this blue line. So the compass bearing would be south, 57 degrees towards west, because we're going left. Left is west, east is right. Uh, for the middle one, it's pretty straightforward because we are starting from the middle, and all we need to do to get to B is point north and rotate 59 degrees clockwise. For it to be an actual true bearing, it's got to be three digits though. So we're not going to say 59 degrees, we're going to say 059 degrees. Okay, true bearings are always given in three digits. Now for our compass bearing, also pretty similar. We are just starting from north and we are rotating 59 degrees towards east. So compass bearings always start with north or south and finish with east or west. So this one is north, 59 degrees towards east. Okay, and the one on the end, again, if we wanna start from north, start in the middle, and then rotate clockwise to get to this blue line, we're gonna be doing 90 to get to east, 180 to get to south, 270 to get to west, so that's three lots of 90, and then adding on the 24. After we do that, we'll have to figure out the gap in here to do our compass bearing, and again, taking away 90, uh, taking 24 away from 90 gives us 66, pretty sure. Um, so if this is 24, this is 66. So once again, to get our true bearing, Starting from north, we're going 90, 80, 270, plus 24, which gets us 294 for our true bearing. And for our compass bearing, we're starting with north and we're rotating 66 degrees towards west to end up on this blue line. So compass bearing is north, 66 degrees towards west. 
Hopefully that gives you a bit of an understanding of the two types of bearings and how we use them. Now let's look at how we can apply them to um, trigonometry. We're gonna look at some HSC questions from both HSC Standard 2 and also the advanced course. Starting off with one from the advanced course, it's from quite a few years ago, but it's still very relevant because you know trigonometry hasn't changed in a few thousand years. We have the bearing of C from A. So from A to get to C, the bearing is 250 degrees and the distance is 36, okay? Um, B is 15 k's north of A. Calculate the distance of C from B. So we're trying to find the length of B, C. Now they've marked a theta on this triangle for us and we're gonna figure out what this theta is. So the question says, the bearing of C from A is 250 degrees. So from A tells you where you're starting. So if we are starting at A, just like SpongeBob, and we pull out our compass and we point it north, we would need to rotate 250 degrees clockwise to then turn around and be looking towards C. So this angle here marked in red is our clockwise rotation, which is the 250 degrees, okay? That's the true bearing of C from A. Now this is quite clearly making a circle here. So if the red part highlighted is 250 degrees, the theta that's actually inside the triangle is gonna be the leftover to make up 360. And 360 take away 250 is 110. Now we have an angle inside the triangle and now we can use some trigonometry. Question also said that A is um, B is 15 kilometers straight north from A. So this length here is 15. Okay, now looking at this triangle, we're trying to find this length here. I'm gonna call it X or you can just call it BC. You can call it whatever you want. Now, this is not a right angle triangle, so we cannot use Sokotoa, our right angle trigonometry. So now we think, can we use the cosine rule or the sine rule? Now, whenever you have one angle and the two sides next to it, just like in my cosine rule video, this is a good application of the cosine rule. If there was another angle we were working with in this triangle, we could use the sine rule, but there isn't, so we're not gonna do that. So we are gonna write down our cosine rule formula to find an unknown side length. C is what we're trying to find, which is X, which means across from that is big C, which is the 110 degrees. A and B can be 15 or 36, it doesn't matter which is which, you're gonna get the same answer. So let's take the information from the picture and put it into our formula. We have X squared equals 15 squared plus 36 squared. Then we're taking away two times 15 times 36 times cos 110. Now, if we put this into our calculator, it's not going to get us x squared. Sorry, it's not going to get us x, it'll get us x squared. So to figure out what x is, we need to take the square root of this because we don't want x squared, we want x. So chucking all that into my calculator inside of a square root to figure out what x is, which is the length from c to b, this gives me roughly an answer of 43.4785 blah, blah, blah. This question specified that we want our answer to the nearest kilometer. So we'll just round off to 43 kilometers and say that is the distance from B to C, which we can just call CB. So roughly 43 Ks gets us the three marks for this advanced HSC question. Okay, up next, we've got one from the standard mathematics course, a pretty recent one. I think this one was a couple of years ago at the time of recording. We have Y is on a bearing of 120 degrees and is 15 kilometers from X. So we can see X, Y is 15. We can see from X, if you rotate from clockwise from north, 120 degrees, you are now looking towards Y. So the picture is matching up with the question very, very clearly. Um, C is 40 kilometers from X, we can see that here, and X lies west of Y. So right across here is a straight east-west line. Um, P is on the line joining C and Y, and it is south of X. So basically P and X are directly north and south, and C and Y are directly east and west. We have two questions for two marks each. The first one is to find the distance from X to P. Um, okay, so let's think about this picture here. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, to find the distance from X to P, which is this length here. Now to work with this triangle, we can see it's a right angle triangle, which is gonna make our life easier, but we need to get an angle inside the triangle. We can very quickly get that because X, um, X and P are directly north and south, which means that this line around here, or this angle around here, is a straight line, which is 180 degrees. So 180 take away 120 gets us 60 inside the triangle and we're trying to find this length here, which is XP. I'm just labeling that as X for now. So in this right angle triangle, I have an angle here and I have the adjacent sides of that angle and I have the hypotenuse. When we're working with adjacent and hypotenuse, we are working with the cosine ratio. So we're using Sokotoa here because we have right angles and it's easier. You can use the sine rule, cosine rule if you want, but it's just gonna be more complicated and more likely for you to make a mistake. Okay, into our equation, we have our angle theta being 60, we have the adjacent side being x, which we're trying to find, and the hypotenuse is the 15 given here. So we have cos 60 equals x over 15. 
we can very quickly solve this by multiplying the 15 across to join the cos 60. So that's going to get us x equals 15 times cos 60. Um, now cos 60 is equal to a half, so this actually gets us an answer of 15 times a half, which is 7.5. And so there's no rounding needed, which is why the question didn't say do any rounding. So if a question doesn't mention any rounding, it's either because you're not going to need any, or the question doesn't care. If the question doesn't specify any rounding, it means they can't possibly take any marks off you for rounding differently. But in this case, 7.5 is the best way to leave your answer. Okay, on to part two now. Now we can change that to 7.5. Part two is what is the bearing of C from X to the nearest degree? So again, reading this question, the from tells us where we're starting. From X, so we're starting in the middle, we want the bearing of C. So we want to be at X, pointing north, and then rotating clockwise to be looking towards C. Notice how it says bearing. It doesn't specify if it's true or compass bearing. Um, if it says just bearing, you can assume it's a true bearing. If they want a compass bearing, they will specify. So true bearing is the more common form for these questions. So we just need to figure out um, this angle in here because we already have the 120 here. We have the 60 here. But to get the rest of the rotation from X clockwise round to be looking at C, we need this angle here, which I'm going to call theta. Okay, we can work inside this triangle here, XCP, because this is 90 degrees down here, which means this is also 90 degrees. So we have another right angle triangle, so we can use Sokotoa. Once again, we have an angle, we're working with the adjacent side to the angle, and we're working with the hypotenuse. So for the second time this question, we are working with the cosine, uh, cosine angle formula, or cosine, you know, ratio formula. Uh, okay, theta is what we're trying to find. A, we figured out in part one was 7.5, and the hypotenuse is quite clearly 40. So we have cos theta equals 7.5 over 40. Now to evaluate theta, all we need to do is take cos inverse of 7.5 over 40. So on your calculator, if it's like mine, that's gonna be shift cos and then put in 7.5 over 40. Evaluate this to the nearest degree is gonna get you an answer approximately equal to 79 degrees to get you two marks in the standard HSC question. Okay, that's all. So quite often bearings questions involve sine and cosine rule, but every now and then they'll throw one in that just uses good old fashioned right angle trigonometry to make things a little harder. This was still a band five question because bearings are very confusing. Anytime you see a bearings question in standard maths, it's gonna be band four or five, sometimes six. Um, and advanced, they're also pretty tough questions because bearings, they just confuse people. And that's why I'm making this video to try and help you out. Okay, and for our last example today, this one was from 2020. So, you know, half a decade ago, but this was in both the advanced and the standard exam for that year. So it was common content. A lot of reading, a lot of bearings. It's a pretty tough question. We have Mr. Ali, which is a teacher. Ms. Brown and a group of students were camping at a site located at P, which is just here. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Uh, Mr. Ali walked with some students on a bearing of 35 degrees for seven kilometers to location A. So A is where Mr. Ali has ended up and B is where Ms. Brown has ended up. Okay, blah, 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 100 degrees, blah, blah, blah. All right, find the distance AB. So let's try and interpret the question and put as much information as possible onto our picture. First of all, it says that the walking, Ali, walking from P to A was on a bearing of 35 degrees. So from north, rotating clockwise to this PA line is an angle of 35 degrees. That's what that bearing means. Now for the angle between these two lines of A and P, it says that Ms. Brown was walking for nine kilometers on a bearing of 100 degrees. So Ms. Brown is starting at P, pointing herself north and then rotating clockwise 100 degrees. So this angle I'm tracing out here would be 100 degrees. If we subtract the 35 from the 100, we get the angle in here, and 100 take away 35 is 65. This is good because we're gonna make a triangle out of these lengths, and it's good to have an angle inside the triangle that we can work with. Um, and that was actually part A that I blocked out on this question. It was just show that this angle is 65 degrees, and then these two are parts B and C, but I just tried to not ruin the surprise. So now for part A, find the distance from A to B. Let's just draw that, make this a little triangle. I'm gonna give it a letter. You can just call it A, B if you want. I'm gonna call it D for distance, or you can go with X again. It's completely up to you. Okay, now once again, because we have a triangle that's got no right angle, we cannot use Sokotoa. Because we have an angle and two sides, we can use the cosine rule formula. Once again, if we had another angle to work with, we could use the sine rule, but when you only have one angle, you typically gotta use the cosine rule formula. So once again, our cosine rule to find a side looks like this. C is what we're trying to find, which is D. This is across from capital C, which in this case is 65. A and B are seven and nine, or nine and seven, whatever you prefer. <coughs> okay, so 
let's put that information from the picture into our equation. So we have d squared equals 7 squared plus 9 squared, take away 2 times 7 times 9 times cos 65. Just like before, when we type this into our calculator, we're going to be super efficient and use a square root because we don't want to find distance squared, we want to find distance. So evaluating our expression inside of a square root gets us an answer of about 8.7607, etc. Now the question did not specify rounding and because we're going to use this one for the next part, we don't want to round too much. So we're not going to say 9, we're not going to say 8.8. .8. Because there's a zero here, it's going to be really nice and accurate to round this to 8.76. That's a really good answer that gets you full marks and it's going to be useful for the next part because if we rounded this and it was becoming less accurate, it might make our answer in part B less accurate and lose us a mark. So typically you want to try and avoid rounding to the last step. In this case, I had to round a little bit because otherwise we'd have a big decimal and it would annoy me. So we have that distance here being 8.76. Let's move on to part B. Find the bearing of Ms. Brown's group from Mr. Ali's group. Give your answer correct to the nearest degree. Um, okay, so bearing from Mr. Ali's group. So from tells you where you're starting, which is right here. And we want to get to or of Ms. Brown's group. So we want to be at A. We want to get out of compass and point ourselves north and figure out how far clockwise to rotate to be then looking at the line that gets us towards B. So the goal of this question for two marks is to find this blue angle here. Now we're going to need to do a fair bit of trigonometry and a bit of geometry to get there. We've got two angles to work out. We've got to figure out this one here on the left and this one down here on the bottom. We're going to start with the left one because we can use a bit of uh, junior geometry to figure this out. These two lines here, this dotted line and this north line here, these are parallel lines. And when there's parallel lines, you can use some angle relationships. What I'm going to use here is that when you have two angles inside a pair of parallel lines, like this angle here and this angle here, these are called um, co-interior angles. And we know that they add together to give 180 degrees. We can use that to work backwards and say, all right, cool, 180 take away 35 gets me 145. And that's what this exterior angle here is. So that was 145 because 145 plus 35 makes the 180, which is the co-interior angles. That's the first part that makes this question a bit tricky. The next part is that now we have to figure out this angle inside our triangle, which we're gonna call theta. Okay, once again, this triangle is not right angled, so soccer toe is off the table. We could use the cosine rule because we have all three sides, but for a bit of variety, because we have two angles marked, we can actually use the sine rule. So to mix it up, I'm gonna be using the sine rule to find an angle. So I'm putting the sine A and the sine B on top. So in my triangle, A is what I'm trying to find, which is theta. This is across from little a, which is gonna be nine. Um, for our other pair, we have 65 pairing with the 8.76. So capital B, we're gonna make 65 degrees which is across from 8.76, which is going to be our lowercase b. So we have sine theta over 9 equals sine 65 over 8.76. Now we're just going to solve this for theta by multiplying the 9 across to make 9 sine 65, or you can do times 9 on the end if you prefer. Okay, once again, we're trying to find theta, but we have sine theta, so we're just going to do an inverse sine or, you know, pressing shift sine on the calculator. So we're doing inverse sine of the fraction above putting this into our calculator and just double checking in the close the brackets and all that stuff. This should give you an answer of approximately 69 degrees. For this question, we're working correct to the nearest degree, so we can do a little bit of rounding here and it's not gonna ruin our answer. Okay, now to finish it off, we're trying to find the blue angle that I've marked over here. So the way we're gonna get that is we're gonna take the entire circle, which is the 360. We're gonna take away the 145. We're gonna take away the red theta, which we just figured out is 69. And that's gonna give us our blue answer. So bearing of B from A is 360, take away the 145, take away the 69. This gives us our final answer of 146 degrees to the nearest degree. And that's how you do a band five question in advanced and standard using bearings and trigonometry. Um, okay, I'm probably gonna do a few more bearings questions when I do a trigonometry review uh, video in a few weeks. Also gonna do a video on radial surveys which also use bearings. So um, if this wasn't enough examples for you, there will be more soon. So um, Please hit subscribe if you want to see them and stay tuned because I'm putting out a video every week and usually every second week or every third week is to do with standard and advanced to try and get a bit of variety. That's all for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that helped you understand bearings a bit more and help prepare for your HSC. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next standard or advanced video lesson. Bye for now, not forever.